copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Well, from the police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 181, regarding a missing person. Described as a male American, 38 years. About 5 feet 10 inches, 150 pounds. Last seen at 5.15 a.m., September 25th. This may be a murder. That's all. Rolls and clips. Try to tie myself down to just dollar jobs. 
I've got to be active. I've got to be doing things that call for something else than just routine. I know, darling. But I can't go around telling everybody that you're too good for the job they have for you here in Santa Maria. Can't you do that, dear? Oh, I suppose so. All right. I'll get out. Oh. I'll get out and get a job, any kind of a job. I'll get a job digging ditches and making roads or something so your precious family can say, don't you just love Charles Calluses? Charles, that's not being very fair. Are you being fair? Who am I supposed to be in love with anyhow? You or your family? Okay, I'll get a job. I'll satisfy them. And Charles Selmax, transport pilot, got a job. A job digging ditches and building roads. A job that paid a mere hundred dollars a month. You the foreman on this job? Yeah, what is it? I got a truckload of prisoners out there ready to go to work. All right, unload them and tell them to get picks and shovels. Put part of them over there on that shoulder and send the rest of them over to help in that ditch. Maybe they'll get calluses. Calluses. <laughs> I got them all right, and what good's it doing me? Ah, nuts. I'm quitting this cockeyed job right now. Lorraine can tell her family to take a long running jump into. Hey, Shorty, yes. come here. Yes, yes, Mr. Summer. Look, I'm leaving here. Uh, now, see? I'm quitting. You're in charge from now on. But where are you going? What are you going to do? What about Kit Ketch? Tell old man Ketch to take it and shove it down his throat. Once again, the name of Charles Selmack figures in Bureau of Air Commerce records that his pilot license is suspended for three months for violation of low-flying regulations. Then, one morning in the spring of 1933, in front of a house on South Sycamore Street in Los Angeles. Good morning. I'm Dr. Hunter. I live next door. I saw your picture in the paper this morning. Flying pretty low yesterday, weren't you? No, I don't know. Just trying to have a little fun. Gets rather tiresome just flying around, looking at the scenery. Did you see me? Yes, I was just bringing my boat down from Santa Barbara. Happened to be opposite the pier when you set your ship down on the sand. That was a dumb stunt. <laughs> well, I won't be doing that for three months anyway. Is that why you're thinking of buying Mrs. Smith's car? Yeah, I want something to get down to the beach with. I like to swim. Well, why don't you come down with us Sunday? We're going to take a little sail down to the island and back. You'll like it. Do you mean it? Why, of course. We'd be glad to have you come. And out of that meeting grew a friendship that ripened and grew as the weeks grew into months. Say, Doc, hey. how about lending me that browning you have? It's a neat little gun, and I'm getting awfully rusty in my sharpshooting. I'd like to take it with me when I drive down to the beach and do a little target practice. Sure, it's the target practice you want to do? Sure, what else? <laughs> you don't think I want to shoot myself, do you? Mm, it hasn't been done. Not by me. I'm having too much fun. Uh, seen Dolores lately? Yeah, I saw her yesterday. Got a date to go to the beach tonight. Good-looking girl, Dolores. Serious about it? No. Why should I tie myself down to any one woman? I like Dolores. We have a lot of fun. That's all there is to it as far as I'm concerned. Well, how about her? How does she feel about it? Just like I do? Why? Oh, nothing, I... Just remember that she didn't look so pleased when you told her you'd been out with Teddy. Dolores hasn't any reason to be jealous of Teddy or anyone else. I hope she realizes that. Why so downhearted tonight, Charlie? Hmm, me? Oh, I'm not downhearted. Never felt better in my life. Well, why didn't you act that way, then? Ah, uh, just thinking, that's all. What about? I'm worried about something that happened last night. What was it? Uh, I'd like to talk about it. Didn't amount to anything. Some guy stuck a knife in my shoulder. Charlie, you, you mean someone stabbed you? Did you report it to the police? No, I'll take care of it myself. I don't want any help from anybody. Do you think it was one of Teddy's boyfriends? I don't know, but I'll find out. And when I do, there'll be trouble around here. And so, Charles Delmack and the girl Dolores has on other occasions spent a time on the beach at Malibu, then began a round of night spots. Then, one morning, almost a week later, the manager of the apartment house in which he lives receives a telephone call from Dolores. Well, I'm sorry, but Mr. Selmack doesn't answer. Are you serious, Lynn? No, but the only way I have is to go up and see if he's asleep or something. Well, he certainly wouldn't be a place to choose, would he? I had an appointment with him, too. He hasn't called since. Well, wait a minute, and I'll ask the houseboy if he's seen him. John? Oh, John, have you seen Mr. Selmack today? No, ma'am, I haven't seen Mr. Selmack since Tuesday. He came in drunk, and I saw him staggering into his apartment Tuesday about 5 o'clock. I went to clean the apartment about 10 o'clock, but he said, go away, my head hurts. Not to clean it that morning. He came back in the afternoon, he told me. Mm. Uh, hello, Miss Dolores. The houseboy says he hasn't seen Mr. Selmack since Tuesday morning about 5 o'clock. I'm coming over right away. Something must be wrong. This apartment is right down the hall here, Miss 
Dolores. Four hundred and eight's the number. Now, where is that key? I always have trouble finding the right key. Now, oh, that's not the one. Let me see. No, that's the key to the basement. Uh, what's this key to? I can't remember. Now, let me see. Oh, please hurry, Mrs. Lichter. Now, don't rush me now. I've got to find the key, haven't I? Let me try. What? The door's not locked. Oh. oh, what in the world's happened in here? What in the world's happened in here? Charlie. 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 Uh, Mrs. Lickie, come here, look. What is it? What's the matter? Look, they're on the floor. Why? Look, look it's here on the kitchen floor, too. Oh, look how this apartment's wet. Well, let's get out of here. Uh, let's call the police. Let's do something. <laughs> looking place. Too quiet for a murder. I never can tell. Some of these joints turn out the worst cases. Remember that case out in Hollywood where the bird shot his wife? Are you the manager? Did you phone for the police? Yes. Well, we're from police headquarters. What's the excitement here? Oh, I was never so excited in my life. Mr. Selmack was such a nice man. Why, he never gave me any trouble at all. He never... Where's the apartment? Well, it's on the fourth floor. As I was going We'd to say... We'd like to look at the apartment, if you don't mind. Oh, of course. Uh, the elevator's right down the hall here. This door's a little hard to open at times. There. Now, the uh, fourth floor. Button. As I was saying, Mr. Selmatt never gave us a bit of trouble. He just came in and went out, and the only time we saw him was when he paid his rent. Oh, uh, here we are. Uh, this door sticks a little, too. Uh, well, what's the number of this apartment? It's apartment 408. Uh, anyone in there now? Well, only the young man from the newspaper. What? Well, uh, I thought it'd be all right to let him... He wanted to get some pictures. He said it'd be awfully hard to get them after the police came. Never but... mind. Let's go in. Well, the gentleman of the place. Hi, Geezy. Hello, Sandy. Nice, juicy murder. Gang killing, maybe, huh? Maybe. Altered anything? Now you know me better than that. Well, that's why I asked you. Well, did you? No, nope. just as you see it when I walked in, except for the lady. She couldn't wait. What lady? Oh, he means Mr. Lawrence. She was the one who came up with me this morning. She had a date with Mr. Selmack to go to Pomona. Pomona? For the fair, Sandy. You know. Fair. Who is this Dolores person? Well, she's one of Mr. Selmack's girlfriends. She's been here before, but she never came in. You said girlfriends. How many did he have? Well, there's Miss Dolores and Teddy and Lorraine and... Oh, yes, Doris. Hmm. You know where they live? No, but they've all left their phone numbers from time to time when they called up Mr. Selmack. Well, that's going to help. Well, look, Hurst, how about checking those phone numbers with the lady here and... Finding out what these women know about the late Mr. Selmack. Assuming that he is the late Mr. Selmack. Hmm. Funny he didn't have any pictures lying around. Funny? <laughs> Devlin's here, isn't he? I resent that, Sandy. Go ahead, see if I care. Where are those pictures? Out in the kitchen where we set them up to make copies of them. Why all the consideration? Why didn't you take the original? Thought you might like to have him to trace the murderer. Oh. If there is a murderer. What do you mean, if? Oh, just if. Why, this is the sweetest murder job you ever saw in your life. What are you talking about? What makes you so sure of that, Tommy? Look. Here's an apartment all ransacked. Furniture knocked all over the place. Enough blood to make a stage show. Bullet holes in the wall. Where? Right over there on the west wall by the door. Well, nice little fella, isn't it? Mm-hmm. About, a, about a 32, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Been through something, too. Sure, a body. Nut. Double it, and I'm still right. Maybe. A lot of blood around this joint. Mm-hmm. Too much for a guy that's been bumped off. Maybe he wasn't as anemic as some of us. Speak for yourself, Tommy. Oh, uh... I'll get it, Mr. Devlin. Okay, go ahead. Top of the old man wanting to know where the heck my story is. No, uh, Mr. Stelmack's not in. Well, I'm not expecting him today, no. Who? Doris. I guess I'll tell him. Oh, I, I'm Lieutenant Geezy, police department. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Boy, did she hang up in a hurry. What'd you expect her to do, make a day? Oh, shut up. Find anything, Sandy? Yeah. Pipe, loosely packed with tobacco, bunch of letters, and a suit of clothes. A suit of clothes? Mm hmm. Seems to have had two of everything. Two pair of shoes, a new one's there in the closet. Perry probably has on. Here's a good suit, just one. An old shirt with a small tear on the sleeve. Same, too. Probably blood. Here's a reference to it in this letter. Where's it from? 
fellow named uh, Gillette from San Francisco. He says, uh, sorry to hear about the fight. You've got to be more careful. Hope the cut in your shoulder gets all right soon. Guess that explains the tear in the shirt. It's funny he didn't have it sewed up. Yeah, awfully funny. Well, what do you think, Sandy? Suicide. What? Hey, what's the matter with you guys? Are you nuts? Is the place a murder a guy ever saw and you walk in and say suicide? Where's the body? I'll bite. Where is it? What does that prove? Are you trying to tell us that some bird walked in here and wrecked this joint, shot Stelmack and carted his body away without anybody seeing him? Stranger things have, haven't they? No, not in Los Angeles, they haven't. Gee, God, Sandy, you're going to stand there and let this bird call this a suicide? I call it a suicide, Tully. Oh, then you're both nuts. Look, here's the way this thing happened. I've been reading these letters, and don't forget, I talked to this Dolores name. Here's the way this thing took place. Some bird walks up and rings this guy's bell. He goes to the door, opens it, and there's Teddy's boyfriend. Or some mug who's after Selmax. This guy slams his foot in the door and fights it. Finally, this bird gets in. And there's a fight in the apartment. The table goes over. Then that lamp. This bird yanks out a gun and lets Selmax have one. That doesn't do the job. This fellow Selmax is a tough baby. Is a tough baby? Was a tough baby. Shut up and listen. Then they fight some more. All over the place, slugging and going out at hammer and tongs. Out in the kitchen, bumping into the stove. Back across the bed. Here in the bathroom. Finally, this bird slugs Selmax and knocks him out. Stands there a minute or two. And he heaves this guy, Selmax, up. Carries him out. Dumps him in the car. Covers him up with a blanket. Gets in and gives him a gun. Okay, there's your crime. What do you say now? Suicide? You ought to be a writer, nuts. Five days later, in the Malibu substation of the sheriff's office, Captain Ryan received a report. Okay, Cap. There's your report on the dead body Dr. Dust will found on the beach. Yeah. Man about 38 to 40. Haven't been in the water five days. Yeah. Cut through body, just below chest, hole in left arm near wrist, cut on arm, upper tricep, blue trousers, no shirt. Find any gun? No, there's a sedan parked up in the road about half a mile from where the body was found. Has some blood stains on it. Uh, we found this briefcase in the road. I see. Goggles. Helmet and scarf. Any marks on them? Uh, hey, where? Here. Yeah, here's the name. Charles Tillman. 119 East Morrison Avenue, Santa Maria, California. Hell, man. Uh, say, you don't suppose that could be the man reported missing by the Los Angeles police, do you? It could be. Well, I think I'll give him a ring. Sanderson speaking. I mean, in his relations with you. No one. 
Mrs. Roberts has told us that you had a little unpleasant experience with Mr. Stelmack. Is that true? Well, Mr. Stelmack borrowed my car to drive to Santa Barbara. When he returned, the speedometer showed the car had been driven 400 miles and the generator had been burned out. He said he'd fix the car, but he never did. I called him several times about it, but he never did anything about the car. Did you say 400 miles? Yes, sir. Yeah, just about took the trip he made to Santa Maria to see his girlfriend. He didn't have a girlfriend in Santa Maria. That's what you think. Then he lied to me. That's possible. That's all, Miss Champion. Uh, Dr. Hatter. Yes? Take your name and occupation. Frank Hunter, physician and surgeon. You knew Charles Stelmach? Very well. Uh, did he? Uh, did you lend him a gun? Yes, sir. About eight months ago. I asked him for it several times. And what did he say? He said, uh, what's the matter? You don't think I'm going to shoot myself, do you? What sort of a gun was it? A Browning make, 32 caliber automatic. Did Charles Stelmach ever discuss uh, suicide with you? Only to say that he thought it took a lot of nerve, and that he thought narcotics might help. You know if he used narcotics? I would say that he did not. Did he tell you of a stab wound? Yes. About a month ago, he told me he'd been attacked by two men and stabbed. You dressed the wound? I did not. Did you offer to do so? No. I told him he should have it attended to, but he seemed reticent about discussing it. Is there anything you'd like to add to your testimony? No, sir. Call Wilson Gillette. Mr. Gillette. Take your name and occupation. Wilson Gillette, writer and journalist. You knew Charles Stelmach? Very well. He was my best friend. You know any reason why he should commit suicide? There was no reason in the world. Do you know of anyone who might want to take his life? He wrote me once he was being troubled by a man who was following him at night. He said this man was a friend of some woman he had met, and that he was afraid he was going to have trouble with the man. In your opinion, did Charles Stelmach commit suicide or was he murdered? I most certainly believe that he was murdered. Furthermore, it seems to me the police department have done very little except attempt to prove that a man has committed suicide. But it is obvious to everyone that he was murdered. That's all I have to say. Mm, Lieutenant Sanderson. State your name and occupation. Roy Sanderson, Homicide Bureau, Los Angeles Police Department. Will you state the details of this case? you know them? On September 30th, a call came in on a missing person. It was relayed to the Central Homicide Detail. It was reported that blood stains and other evidence of violence were discovered. I was detailed to the case along with Detectives Hurst and Jesus. Now, why did you conclude that Charles Stelmach committed suicide? Well, in the first place, when we got to the apartment, we found evidences of a disturbance. Yet our questioning of other tenants didn't disclose anybody who'd heard a disturbance. No one had heard a shot either, so it must have been muffled. On the floor, and at least five feet from an overturned table, was a pipe. It had evidently been knocked off, and it was loosely packed. No tobacco had been filled. Remember that, gentlemen. Uh, the lamp had been knocked over. Yet when it was set up right, the bulb still burned. It hadn't been broken. We found a bullet from a 32 caliber gun embedded in the muff board. It wasn't in the wall very deeply. The test showed that it hadn't struck with much force. Dr. Hutter stated that the gun he lent Selmack would have acted in just such a manner had the bullet passed through any substance, say an arm or hand. Did you find any blood stains? Yes. Here are some photographs of the apartment showing the blood stains on the floor and the walls. This X marks the spot where the largest stain appears. This X marks the spot where the bullet was found. You'll see by this white line here, the shot came from about waist high and followed this course to the mop board here. How do you explain this large blood stain? Someone stood there while blood dripped straight down from an injury and did something with his other hand. What might that action have been? Might have been wrapping a towel around the gun. Was there any injury on the body of a child Stelmack that would indicate that he had been shot or injured in any manner as the cause of these things? Yes. Yes, he had a small cut on his left wrist. Also an injury that may have been a gunshot wound. And with what was this cut on the wrist made? With this razor blade. Where did you find that? The back of the top dresser drawer, Tommy. You missed it. When the automobile of Charles Stelmack was found near the beach of Malibu Road, did it bear any blood stains? Yes, on the left side of the seat cushion and on the left side of the steering wheel. And could Stelmack have shot himself, lying in the apartment, and then have driven to the beach? Yes, he could have. In this photograph of the floor and part of the wall of the apartment, you see that the splotches of blood indicate that they were made by a man swinging his arm from front to rear like this. Whereas, had they been the result of blows being dealt by another man, or any normal movement, they would have struck from this angle would have indicated a forward movement. After driving his car to the beach, what action is indicated by the condition of the body? Well, I'd say that the man waded into the water a distance sufficient to assure his body sinking, that he shot himself just below the heart. Can you ascribe any motive for such an act? In June of this year, Charles Selmack took out an insurance policy in the amount of $3,000 payable to his brother Paul living in New York. He had a previous policy for $1,000, but the new policy was not payable in case of suicide. 
Was this policy payable in case of death from any other cause? Yes. Besides, he had recently been making an effort to establish a double indemnity clause in the policy, payable in case of accidental death. Would his murder have been construed as uh, accidental death? I believe the courts have so ruled. I believe I can add much more. Why didn't you tell me about that policy? Where'd you find it? Stuck in behind one of those pictures you so carefully copied. Okay, you win. John Doe, number 71, murdered himself. And so the case of John Doe, number 71, was closed with a verdict of suicide. On October 27th, 1934, word came from New York that Paul Selmack, brother of the dead man, had also killed himself. It was learned that in 1922, the father of the two boys had died in a similar manner. $600 million annually. That's what automotive engineers estimate the nation's automobile repair bill to be. They declare that more than one half of its staggering expense is caused by faulty lubrication. $300 million. A small part of this may be yours. There is one way that you can stay on the safe side, and that is to put your lubrication problem entirely in the hands of your neighborhood Rio Grande dealer. Only he can give you the advantages of the Sinclair Law of Lubrication. The Sinclair Law of Lubrication definitely takes the guesswork out of car maintenance and automatically indicates the proper grade of oil for your car in consideration of its age, make, and model. He handles the internationally famous Sinclair Motor Oil, Sinclair Pennsylvania, and Sinclair Opening, both de-wax and de jelly to give you complete lubricating quality. Sinclair oils will not break down under the most grueling conditions of summer heat and wear. They have been selected on performance basis by eight major airlines, 150 railroads, and millions of motors in 45 nations of the world. Save money. Save your car. Sinclair eyes for safety at your real grand dealer. And now Inspector Hotley has a parting word. Once more, as always, we find that crime, though motivated by a spirit of self-sacrifice, such as moves Charles Selmack, is nevertheless a crime and does not pay. I wish to express my thanks to the officers concerned in this case, both from the police department and the sheriff's office, for their splendid work and the manner in which they cooperated. Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. The cancellation broadcast 181 regarding a missing person. His body was found on the beach near Malibu. That's all. Rolls and quits. Thank you.